Welcome to Binge Watchers, where we talk about the stories and characters we love and the shows they live in. My name is Ron, and let's talk about the third and final season of the Netflix original, Bloodline. I really liked Bloodline from the start, from season one, episode one. It's definitely not for everybody in the sense that you'll either get caught up in it and the whole show will be like watching someone wind a rope. I don't know if that's the right word. Anyway, you keep thinking that the rope will break but it doesn't, and it's driving you insane, but you can't look away. That's how I feel about Bloodline. Or you'll be incredibly bored, and you'll think that this is the most painstakingly boring thing you've ever watched. Fuck, nothing happens. That's how my wife feels about Bloodline. Sometimes when I watch something on my iPad in bed, she'll watch it with me just until she falls asleep, but she says that Bloodline is too boring to even fall asleep with. Anyway, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you've watched season two. I'm not gonna spoil anything about season three, but I am going to talk about a massive season two spoiler. So if you're just looking for a recommendation, then yes, I stand by the things I said in my season one and two reviews go watch this show. Okay, so in the end of season two, ready? Here it comes. Kevin, who is the worst, bashes Marco's head in with a dolphin statue. Kevin murders Marco, and now basically another Rayburn brother is a murderer, and there's another murder for the Rayburns to cover up. It kind of sounds like the same story all over again, and it kind of is, but also it isn't. Bloodline is an excruciatingly heavy and slow story. It's a family drama in every sense of the word, and that's the part about it that's not for everybody. What it does give you, though, is unbelievable character development. Once you get into this show, and I mean really get into it, you're in for an emotional ride. So while it's a similar story, it feels like round two. Everybody's on the brink, you see cracks forming in that once unbreakable Rayburn family loyalty. They're not the same, they've been through stuff, and you know so much about these characters at this point that it's fascinating to see what another round of let's cover up the murder will do to them. All of the problems the Rayburns are facing in this season are compounded by two things. One, Danny's death, obviously. Danny's murder is still a dark cloud over everything. It still affects absolutely everything. Number two is Kevin, who is the worst. Just the fact that now Kevin, who is the worst, is the one in the center of all of this. He's the one they have, they have to cover up for. Makes everything more complicated because Kevin is the worst. Every character in this show is a tragic character, but Kevin... Kevin's the worst. You'll be face palming at Kevin, who is the worst, very often in this season, and you'll love it, and you'll hate it, but you'll love it. This show is sweet, sweet torture. So this season definitely has a heavy focus on Kevin and John, and John is on a bad path, and it's getting worse. The focus is on the Kevin killed Marco, they have to cover it up story first, and then the drama it causes in the family second. The season also explores John's private life and the toll that all of this is taking on it. This means that some stories are sort of left up in the air, not every thread gets completely followed up on. Especially the things around Nolan and a few other things, you'll definitely finish this season with some unanswered questions, or questions that you'll have to answer for yourself, and it's the final season, so this is all we get. The performances are, of course, still breathtaking. Every single character in this show does an amazing job, and the show is still incredibly impressive to look at. This is not the show to watch on shitty Wi-Fi. You need no buffering, HD all the way, none of that low-resolution shit. There is this subplot with that guy Ozzy Del Vecchio that I didn't like so much, it didn't make a lot of sense, and it really, it didn't really fit in anywhere in the story. I'm not sure why they even had that in there, but I can say it really hurt the show. It was just kind of like, there. And the ending, to be honest, it ended a bit differently than how I had hoped. I'm still kind of thinking about it, it leaves some stuff for you to kind of complete in your head. I don't know, I hoped for a bit more closure, but it was still very good. And the last thing I'll say is that towards the end of the season, there's an episode that's a complete and utter mindfuck. And either you'll love it, or you'll hate it with every fiber of your being. Personally, I loved it. I'd love to know what you thought about it. If you've watched the show, there's no way you don't know exactly what I'm talking about. 
Bottom line, should you watch it? Yes, absolutely. Watch this season with your face, just like seasons one and two. Season one was probably the best. Doesn't really matter though. I'm sad this show has to go away, but I like it when shows end. I like a good series finale. There's something powerful about it. And I'm not sure we actually need another season of Bloodline to complete the story, but if there will ever be another surprise season, yeah, I'll watch it. What about you? Have you watched season three of Bloodline? What were your thoughts about it? Which one of these broken characters <laughs> spoke to you the most? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's get the discussion going. Some of you have been asking me to get on the TV Time app so you can kind of track what I'm watching and also see like reactions per episode. So I'm on the app now. You can find a link in the description to download it or you can look me up on the app um, as binge watchers. This is not a sponsor thing, by the way. I, I'm not sure why I feel compelled to say that, but uh, yeah. If you're gonna be talking about spoilers, please use spoiler tags in your comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help out a lot. And if you're finding binge watchers for the first time, welcome. I'd like to invite you to join the binge watchers community. Come talk about TV with us. It's a lot of fun. Subscribe to the channel. But in any case, keep binging, and I will see you next time.